Hey, it's the Terminion Hero here, and we're playing some more Jack and Daxter, the Precursor Legacy. Uh, we've got some missions to do on Misty Island and some to do in the Forbidden Jungle, but we can't even get to Misty Island until we do the missions in the Forbidden Jungle. So I guess let's head there first. We do have some Precursor Orbs, so I guess we could give our uncle some orbs along the way, because... I'd rather give him orbs than the mayor, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. I see you two are back to make the trade. Good, good, jolly good. Hey, you have the uh, precursor orbs that we agreed on? I hope you put this hard-earned power cell to good use. Cheerio, ta-ta, bye-bye. I'm not sure if we can talk to him after we finished our mission with him. I don't think so. But I guess there's only one way to find out. No, we can't. Once the missions are done, they don't have anything to say to us. For most characters, there are exceptions. Yeah, same thing with the farmer here. Anyways, it's time to sort of 100% sand over village as we enter the Forbidden Jungle. So by picking up the orbs back here, that's all of the sand over village orbs because this is still technically in that area. It's like right on the border. So all that's left in Sandover Village is power cells that, you know, we get from paying orbs to people. So that place is basically 100% done because all we have left to do is stuff from, you know, collecting orbs in other levels. Of course, we still have to collect the power cells in that level, but we've got a few missions to do here. And I don't really want to collect too much right now. Right now, I'm in mission mode instead of collectathon mode. We should ask the fisherman down by the jungle river if we can borrow his speedboat to zoom on over to Misty Island. Sounds good to me. He's right down here. What do you have in the basket? Nothing to talk about. Them monsters patrolling the ocean took a bite out of me fishing rig. Another goblin up me catch! No matter what I try, I can't seem to catch a single fish in this river. Woo! Maybe it's your breath. You think you can do better? Try scooping up river fish with a tiny net. I'll give you a power set. If you can catch 200 pounds of them critters, and then I'll let you and Shrimp here use my speedboat to get to Misty Island. He's want to try the challenge. Eh, nah. Well, if you want to try for the power cell sometime, you know where to find me. But seriously, let's actually do it once you let me talk to you again. Want to try and beat the river, do ya? And there are two types of good fish to catch. One pound fishies and five pound fishies. And if you miss 20 pounds of good fish, then I'm gonna take me net back from you. There are poisonous eels in this river. Catch even a one of them boogers and you'll poison the whole darn catch. All right, so we got to get 200 pounds, and uh, the hitbox on this net is pretty forgiving, but the fish do kind of come at you kind of fast sometimes. I mean, they're always about this speed, but, you know, there's a lot of them. But yeah, you can catch a fish by, you know, moving the net sideways into the fish. That still counts. Which is good for when you're trying to catch fish, but not good for when you're trying to avoid poisonous eels. To the left. I 
thought I was gonna do perfect. I'm disappointed. Yeah, now it's getting a bit difficult. But I'm... I'm far enough that it shouldn't matter. I'll still easily win as long as I don't accidentally catch an eel. And there's just these moments when there's pretty much just eels. And maybe an occasional five pounder mixed in with the eels. Here comes a You did it! You caught 200 pounds of fish! A bad for a couple of landlubbers. Here's the power cell I promised. And you can use my boat at the village dock whenever you like. <laughs> and now this guy will laugh here for all of eternity. We will hear him every time we use the bridge above him. So get used to that. I don't know what's so funny, but it must be something pretty hilarious. Anyways, we've got two other missions to do here. We've got to find the switch in the temple. And we need to reconnect the village's eco beam for the mayor. So first of all, let's just try to get into the temple, which would be this way. Also, we've got these plants that are trying to attack us. But yeah, you go here with Blue Eco, it makes a bridge for us. Not a complete bridge, but a complete enough bridge. And then we can go in this way, and let's explore a little bit while going up the tower, because we're not going to be going back into this place. So we might as well get everything on our first trip. I thought Daxter might say something when we step on that platform without Blue Eco, but I guess not. So we're using Blue Eco to find different ways to get up. We've got this interesting here that was called a Precursor Launcher earlier, so that should be interesting. Yeah, it's basically just a big jump pad. Anyways, we're done with the Blue Eco now. We can get to the top from here. And just take in the view. Like seriously, this game is beautiful. We got Misty Island. You can just barely see Geyser Rock past the fog there. There's Sandover Village. Sentinel Beach is over there. Uh, Fire Canyon. And you know, a whole bunch of other areas in the game that we don't even know about yet. There's also a pretty cool looking thing directly above us, so I figured I'd show that. This is something you can see from far away too. So it's just cool how everything here is connected, you know? I've always wanted to see like a complete map of not just each Jack and Daxter game, but also all the games combined, because a lot of the games have familiar landmarks that appear in multiple games. But anyways, let's just collect this power cell. And now that we've collected that, this button in the center lifted us, allowing us to enter the temple. Hey. 
we've got a few doors here that are closed. We need Blue Eco for that. We've got a capped vent. A launcher we can't use. Also, you've got to love the Crash Bandicoot style music here. This was composed by the same guy who composed the early Crash games. And funny enough, as a music composer, his name is actually Mutato Musica. He's got the perfect name for the job. Anyways, this looks fancy. Looks like maybe a big switch. So yeah, any Blue Eco vents that were previously locked are now open. We can open these doors. We can use this precursor launcher. We can use this other precursor launcher over here once we get past that tricky platform. We scrounged enough orbs to trade for a power cell. Let's get back and make the switch already. Now we just need to find our way out of here. <laughs> Which is past this guy. Let's wait till this platform is right. Now these guys... Ow. They sometimes have spikes and sometimes don't, so you gotta hit them when they don't have spikes. Now we can climb up the leaves and hit this guy. I gotta be careful, because I didn't really come into this fight with health. Not that it's a hard fight, but, you know, it's always scary being on one remaining hit. Actually, I... I was just about to say, actually, I want him to eat me, because I remembered there was a cutscene for that. But now that I didn't say it in time, you won't believe me. Um, but anyways, let's do this fight properly now. I didn't think he was still gonna hit me after I got rid of that guy. I thought he would be in his vulnerable mode, but he wasn't quite yet. Just a little note as far as this game's health system goes. I feel like it's worth mentioning that 50 small green eco is a lot of small green eco to collect to just get one hit, or to one extra health. Anyways, so we beat this boss, our first boss in the game, and also an optional one. Now, it might seem like there's not much else in here aside from, you know, the precursor launcher we can use. However, remember, this is Naughty Dog. They created Crash Bandicoot, and in Crash 2, there was that little secret you could get by jumping on Polar a bunch of times to get a bunch of lives from him in the hub world. And they kind of brought that back here, in a way. If we jump on his head here... Orb. 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 You can get five orbs from jumping on this thing's head, but you actually have to collect the orb for more orbs to show up, so just be careful about that. Anyways, let's get out of here. 
that puts us at the top of this contraption. So we've got one more mission to do in this area before we, um, before we leave. I mean, there's plenty of other stuff to do in this level, but like I said, we're in mission mode right now, not collectathon mode. So, what we need to do now is we need to help the mayor to reconnect the village's eco beam. So that way the village can have power again. Now this eco beam looks like it would hurt you, but it's an eco beam, so it just fills you up with blue eco. And we could use this to, you know, unlock that door over there. That would be the easy way to unlock that door. And that's exactly why I consider it the cheaty way. Break the mirror, Jack! So yeah, we wanna break this mirror that's blocking the eco beam and putting it into this machine. Those tower doohickeys scattered all over the jungle must redirect the eco beam. Let's go fiddle with them. Also notice now that we destroyed the, the dark eco plant, all of these little vine creatures that were attacking us are dead now. So they were apparently part of that creature. But now that we've got this thing, we can redirect. The beam by pointing it at the next tower. Hey, we can follow the beam to find the next tower. But yeah, so we can use these machines to redirect the beam, and then we just follow the beam to wherever we redirected it to. You can l I saw a thing coming, but I was already going into first person mode. You are spiky, and I am dead. I'll say something really teary at the funeral. Like, how am I gonna get Jake back now? So, is the beam still redirected? Looks like it is. What I was trying to say is that, you know, you can follow the beam to get to the next tower, and you can know where it is by just looking up into the sky and following the beam there. It can be kind of hard to see from the ground, you know, without going into first person, but if you look, if you go into first person, it's easy. Let's go to the next tower and reconnect the beam there! And you know, while you're redirecting the beam, you've got that reticle that has an arrow that points to where you need to point it. So, you know, it's nice and convenient. Anyways, the next spot was right over here. I was going the wrong way. I was one step ahead of myself there. I don't know how I could be ahead of myself, but I was apparently. That's the tower I was about to go to. <laughs> that guy's still laughing, and he will be for all eternity. How much health do I have? Is there a button that'll... Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty much full, so I can show you what this is. You're not gonna say anything, Daxter? So yeah, it's a dark eco box. Daxter usually yells at you about touching them. So yeah, if you touch it at all, it explodes. It's like Nitro in Crash Bandicoot. Anyways, this is the last tower, 
technically it's back in Sandover Village, because the orbs here were counted as Sandover Village. We should go tell that windbag of a mayor that he owes us big time for connecting the village energy beam. Alright, so we can get two power cells from the mayor now, because we reconnected the beam and we have enough orbs to pay him. Hey! Let's go check out old Fish Breath's speedboat at the dock! We'll do that in a little bit, Daxter. Well, you know, in probably in the in the next video, maybe, maybe this one. Oh, what a wonderful sight! I thank you. The entire village will thank me. Uh, boys, you have restored power to the village and guaranteed my re-election. And for that, my boy. You've earned a power cell. So, uh, you uh, want to make a contribution? Good. A, a sizable one, I hope. You! <laughs> oh, it is a sizable contribution. I, well, 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 I, I just hope this power cell adequately represents my gratitude. All right, so the only missions we haven't done here in in Sandover Village is just, you know, getting the orbs from uh, that precursor oracle over there. And we haven't done, like, we haven't got the sculptor's muse back for him, because that's on Misty Island. And of course, Samos also has a mission for us on Misty Island. And maybe Kira will too. We've just done a mission for her of, you know, doing, you know, unblocking the vents. Or, you know, finding the switch in the temple. See, there's the thing on the top of the temple. It looks really cool. I mean, this area looks nice too. This, air this game has a lot of nice places. Hey, baby, what you working on? Be careful with that. I'm trying to figure out how to transport the Zoomer using the trans pads the precursors left all over the world. If you come across one of these pads, I can lock onto your communicator's location and send you the Zoomer. Keep an eye out for a trans pad when you explore Misty Island and wherever else you go. Yeah, so she's got a mission for us there, and I'm sure she has something else to say when it finally lets us talk. I've definitely figured out how to use the transpads. Now go to Misty Island, and I'll send the Zoomer over to you. Will do. But we are going to do that in the next video. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna head to Misty Island then. I'm the Terminian Hero, and I will see you then.